From the murky waters of the sportsman's paradise, stories emerge. Stories of the generations of people who have shared in the bounties of the land. Stories of communities that have persevered through natural disasters. Stories of the abundance of fish, wildlife, and adventures that create an ecosystem rich in diversity. And from the silted banks of the mighty Mississippi to the soggy marsh bottoms, from the tops of towering pine forests to the depths of the salty gulf, human and animal have shared this fortune for centuries. Enjoy these stories as told by outdoor journalists who travel across our state documenting the adventure, sportsmanship, and heritage that make us Bayou Wild. Welcome to Bayou Wild TV. We're here at Morton Seafood Restaurant, our home base in Madisonville along the Chifuncta River. Don, it's hard to believe this year has gone by so fast, but it's duck season. We're going to head out with Mike Bench of the New Orleans chapter of Ducks Unlimited. We're going to talk about the passion of duck hunting and kind of how it traverses all ages. And then we went through some really rough times, or they said we were in rough times, and we were in a 30-day season, a three-duck limit. And we seemed to have a lot of ducks uh, to choose from. You know, there's a lot of folks in Louisiana and several other states that are concerned about an altered migration flight. Mark Merchant joins us. He's put together a lot of information that you're going to definitely be interested in hearing about. Guys up north said, hey, don't worry. Uh, you know, they're, 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 we're not changing the migration. And we did. They changed the migration in a very permanent and very lasting way. And I'm afraid we're seeing that right now with the ducks. And if we sit around with our hands in our pockets, we're sealing our own fate. And then we go to the kitchen. We head to White Oak. We're going to go back in the kitchen with Chef John Fulce. Now, we're not cooking duck, but we are cooking another bird, one of our favorites, quail. Quail in Death by Gumbo. This is a unique recipe that he's never shown on TV before, so you don't want to miss it. It puffs the quail mm -hmm. up. And so what we do for the restaurant uh, at the restaurant is we take our paring knife, and if you can, just gently cut it to about right there from the leg so we can open it up a little bit. Closed captioning made possible by CETO.com. Become a member. If you're a proud Bayou Wild TV viewer, check out the Bayou Wild TV Collection shirts. Both regular tee and long sleeve dry fit are a perfect fit for any outdoorsman or woman who lives and plays in Bayou Country. And they make perfect gifts. Go to BayouWildTV.com. If you're lucky enough to bag a deer or a hog this season, bring it here to Double D. Double D processes hogs and exotic game and guarantees your product is always the meat you brought to Double D. Double D Meats in Bogalusa, home of country smoked, spicy jalapeno cheddar, and other customized flavors. Bring your deer or your hog here to Double D, where you always get your meat back in return. It's worth a drive to Bogalusa from anywhere. Double D. Dad brought me out here when I was 13 years old to duck hunt. He came back from uh, Southeast Asia, from Vietnam, and of course, first thing we did was we made our first trip down here for duck hunting season. And I was hooked from the get-go. Uh, I had a single shot, 20 gauge. We didn't have a lot of ducks back then, whatever it was. It was they told me it was a two duck limit, uh, but you could have a two day possession. I remember the limits changing, uh, and then we got into the, the point system. 
10 point ducks, then there was 20 point ducks, it was 10 ducks, five ducks, and then we went through some really rough times, or they said we were in rough times, and we were in a 30 day season, a three duck limit, and we seemed to have a lot of ducks uh, to choose from. You know, You know how they say if a shark stops swimming, he'll die? There's people like Mike that if you take away duck hunting, their life will not be the same. So he's definitely somebody that counts down the days, enjoys the process, prepares for it, travels with it, and really just makes it part of his life. It's not just a hobby, it's really just part of his everyday life year round. And to take it to the next level to where you become a fundraiser for such a great sport really means that it's in your blood and you can certainly see the passion Mike has for it. I made my first DU banquet in 1972. I was 18 years old. I came in from LSU. I do remember one thing from that night was there was a 16 millimeter projector with a big old movie screen and uh, it was a public service announcement uh, that they ran the Ducks Unlimited deal and it was John Wayne. And it's that can-do spirit that I believe in. I feel that this outfit deserves our support. And by support, I mean dollars. So if you got any extra, don't forget, Ducks Unlimited. My first start was as just a prize committee chairman. And, and really, that was what I did for a long, long time. I was content to do that. Sooner or later, uh, I finally gave in and and agreed that I would be state chairman. You know, it's one thing to be out here duck hunting and shooting ducks and taking, but it's a whole nother thing when you're giving back to the resource. And, and I looked at it real, really carefully. And, and truth of the matter is, the worst duck season I ever had out here was 2002. When you look out this marsh and not see a duck anywhere, that, that's, that's, that's telling. You know, it's been easy for me just to say, no, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna fight this fight anymore. I'm not gonna put up with the, the foolishness. But, but the reality of it is, if I gave it up, I wouldn't be able to be out here hunting. So, and I'm gonna be out here hunting whether there are ducks or no ducks, or a lot of ducks or a few ducks. Hunters in Louisiana have a strong pride for what they do. Um, I've lived across the country in the southeast and the northeast, and you find hunters just about everywhere. But it really seems to be something that's ingrained in folks here. Kids start really young, as soon as they can hold a shotgun, or even sooner than that, they go out and just watch their parents or their friends uh, duck hunt. So it's definitely a large part of the culture here, and I can see why. I started hunting when I was very little, doing everything but duck hunting. Um, started out with deer and turkey, squirrel, rabbit, anything and everything. Um, my whole family hunted, got into it with them. We started out shooting nothing but wood ducks. Around the house we would hunt wood duck roosts, that's all we had. Birds don't stop, but they fly over everywhere, but they don't stop everywhere always. And um, the more we did it and the more places we went and the more different birds that we were in the area of hunting, the better we got at it. I mean, we took a lot of things that we never knew what they were. And as we learned what they were, we knew what we wanted to go after and how to find what we were after and how to make them do what we wanted them to do to be able to harvest the birds. I love how anyone can, can get into it. Like, it's not something that you have to completely be born into. I wasn't the biggest duck hunter until I came to college. Uh, I was a longtime sportsman, outdoorsman. My dad got me very involved. It's about a way of life, a way of continuing traditions, the way that things used to have to be being able to enjoy it in a more leisurely way now that you don't have to go out and hunt but we choose to to keep it alive and keep things thriving the way they are. You're building blinds, you're getting everything ready, you're going out freezing cold, it's not like walking to a deer stand, it's just a lot more momentum going into it. We do a lot more than just hunt ducks, I mean it's not just about the ducks, like you're restoring wetlands, like in, especially in New Orleans, Louisiana area, the wetland conservation is just huge but I can definitely see myself being more involved in an Africa. Coming up next, it's no secret that the waterfowl hunters along the Mississippi Flyway, mostly in Louisiana, have experienced some really dreadful seasons. There's a lot of reasons for the cause. Today, we explore one that a lot of people think might be a major cause. I've known that, that uh, there's been some alterations of, of agricultural practices uh, up in the Midwest. 
I've known about that for at least 15 years. I became aware of that in the, uh, the early 2000s. And, uh, but I, I wasn't aware of just how prevalent the act had gotten of, of, of planting uh, and flooding uh, seed, seed grains for just for the purposes of hunting, even without, without uh, harvesting. In 1967, Dutch Stogner realized his dream to run his own meat market. Fifty years and three generations later, Double D and the Stogner family still operate with Dutch's original commitment to quality. Pick up some Double D sausage today and share your good times with us on Facebook. Some things in life smell delicious. Others, not so much. Like a gas leak. Propane, for instance, is naturally odorless. That's why we add strong odorants to alert you if there is a leak. So if you ever smell gas, turn your system off at the tank and call your propane dealer immediately. Propane is a safe and exceptional fuel, and we want to keep it that way. This is Don Dubuque asking you to join me as a member of the Coastal Conservation Association. For 30 years, CCA has worked in Louisiana to conserve our incredible fisheries, making sure that our fishing is great today and for generations to come, whether looking out for redfish and specks, eliminating gill nets, building reefs across the coast, or work at the state capitol and in D.C., CCA is doing what's best for the fish and the sport we love so much. Your $30 membership will ensure that this work and our great fishing endures well into the future. Go to CCALouisiana.com and join CCA today. In 1967, Dutch Stogner realized his dream to run his own meat market. Fifty years and three generations later, Double D and the Stogner family still operate with Dutch's original commitment to quality. Pick up some Double D sausage today and share your good times with us on Facebook. I founded Flyway Federation in February of 2018. My research showed that the law changes in 1998 and implementing the AHM and the CES, all this led to the exact years that I was witnessing the lack of migration here in the state of Louisiana. And so I started going around and asking guide services, guides, management, wildlife agents, biologists, to find out if they saw the same thing that I was seeing. My name is Mark Merchant, uh, and I'm a professor of biochemistry at McNeese State University. I've been there for about 19 years now. I started waterfowl hunting with my grandfather when I was uh, just six years old. Of course, he didn't let me shoot at that point. He, he had me bring a BB gun. That was in 1972. I've known that that uh, there's been some alterations of, of agricultural practices uh, up in the Midwest. I've known about that for at least 15 years. I became aware of that in the, uh, the early 2000s. I knew something was happening and these key years tied to all these dates of problems. I wanted to uh, look into it myself. I'm a scientist and, and uh, you know, I, I look at data for a living. I collect data, I compile data, uh, data, I analyze data. There is a lot of controversy about short-stopping ducks. We've had 17 of the warmest years on record in the last 18 years. We have had large changes in agricultural practices up and down the flyway. It is perfectly natural for birds to adjust their wintering distribution based on environmental and climatological and land use conditions. I looked at snowfall in the fall, I looked at snowfall in the winter, I looked at rainfall in the fall, I looked at rainfall in the winter. There is no correlation with the reduction of the migration with any of these weather factors. We all know that ducks need food and they need water and they need shelter. So I looked at back to the Canada Goose because the Gulf Coast and on up into Arkansas and into Oklahoma, we wintered the 100% of the Canada Goose migration, historically. Back in those days, uh, the guys up north said, hey, don't worry, uh, you know, they're, 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 we're not changing the migration, and we did. They changed the migration in a very permanent and very lasting way. And I'm afraid we're seeing that right now with the ducks. And if we sit around with our hands in our pockets, we're sealing our own fate. If a bird is traveling thousands of miles to get somewhere and there's something that's going to distract it, 
it's going to be a ripple effect for us especially because we're really that last stop and I think that's a concerning thing for Louisianians and uh, needs to be paid attention to. With, with the agricultural practices, the planting, levying and flooding of corn, that's not natural. There's nothing natural about corn just won't come up by itself and you have to plant it year after year and you have to manipulate it. If we don't end this now, our grandchildren and their children aren't going to have a natural flyway. We are here to look over our lands for our children for the future with our natural resources. Future of, of waterfowling down here with the current trends, I don't even want to think about. I've been, I've been hunting waterfowl for 47 years and I, I'd love for my grandchildren to grow up hunting waterfowl the way we did. But I, I, I guess I guess that all remains to be seen. I, I just don't know. Uh, but the writing's on the wall. The writing's on the wall, and if it continues the same trend, it's not going to get better. Anyone that duck hunts regularly, or even a few times a year, just consistently will tell you that the ducks just haven't been around. Now, some folks will have had a good year, and they're going to tell you they haven't seen any changes, but I think the overall emphasis is that the larger area is not seeing the consistency they have in past years, and it's starting to become persistent enough over the years that people are really worried about it. I hope that we don't look back in 20 years and say we had something to, we, we could have done something about this in 2015 and 2020 and we didn't and now look just like the Canada geese they're gone and they're not coming back. Discover the taste of Louisiana that's seasoned just right boiled to perfection, and rich with tradition. A taste that's savory, crispy, and a little sweet. Discover the taste of Louisiana fish fry products. Hi, I'm Donnie Rouse. There are a lot of different reasons to shop at Rouse's. It's the people. Everybody that works here is just so nice. Our stores get delivery seven days a week. They have such a wide variety at Rouse's. Everything's in stock. I mean, everything. We use Rouse family recipes and ingredients found right here in the store. It's the food. Rouse's food tastes like homemade. And they're local. Like us. We also have great prices. That's the difference Rouse's makes. This is Don Dubuque asking you to join me as a member of the Coastal Conservation Association. For 30 years, CCA has worked in Louisiana to conserve our incredible fisheries, making sure that our fishing is great today and for generations to come, whether looking out for redfish and specks, eliminating gill nets, building reefs across the coast, or work at the state capitol and in D.C., CCA is doing what's best for the fish and the sport we love so much. Your $30 membership will ensure that this work and our great fishing endures well into the future. Go to CCALouisiana.com and join CCA today. Back in the kitchen of Chef John Foles, and John, you know, almost as much as the food what I like about coming here is your stories. You always got a story to go with the recipe. Now, death by gumbo, you got to confirm, is there any truth to the rumor that it was so good somebody actually overdosed and ate it? <laughs> almost. Uh, death by gumbo, which is the most, uh, the, the, I think, the most important dish at my restaurant revolution in New Orleans, and it was named by uh, Craig Claiborne, the food editor of the New York Times, who called me to New York to say, you wrote a book called The Evolution of Cajun and Creole Cuisine, and we at the New York Times don't really think you can evolve Cajun and Creole Cuisine. What you gotta, they know? You got to stay really <laughs> tight. I said, uh, he said, why don't you, can you evolve gumbo? I said, well, I think we can do a pretty good job of evolving. He said, well, let's go ahead and do that, and I did it for the New York Times, and that's what made this dish famous, and of course, it's the dish that's uh, sought after mm. that revolution. Death by gumbo, of course, is the boneless quail. And the first question people ask is, 
the difficulty of deboning a quail, a teal duck, a wood duck, which is probably the biggest duck you would want to. Uh, but if you go to the website and look up deboning quail, Jacques Papin, a great French chef, does a beautiful job of showing you step by step how to open up the neck and getting the wishbone and breaking it out. And he show, and you see how unbelievably simple it is to do. And the, the just deboning the breast, the leg bones, and the wing bones stay sure. in. So death by gun. Uh, we begin by taking a little bit of the filet powder there and uh, and uh, you can uh, just kind of mix a little bit of the filet in because the secret is that everything in the gumbo goes into the quail. So you can stir that up a little bit. That's filet rice. I'm going to put a little green onions and parsley into it as well. And then I'm going to spice it up with a little salt, pepper, and garlic. So now you have your filet inside of the uh, inside of the rice, and that mixture is all well seasoned. So then, what we do at the restaurant, we take the quail and we open it up from the back. And the first thing we do is to put a slice of that smoky on do it on. Now that's going to hold. Uh, I'm going to put it, lay it flat and push it up to the front, and that's going to hold the rice in. So let's go ahead and put a spoon of the rice in. Now you have to put an oyster in. You see your oysters right mm -hmm. here? Just grab one of those and put it right in over the rice. Oysters hey. ain't that easy to grab. <laughs> now push, push that in yeah, with your hand get really good. Oh, yeah, get him down in there. Now one more of the undoe, which is going to kind of block okay. the back of it. Just push it in undo nice it. and flat. Say yeah. hello to the oyster. <laughs> there you go. So now you have an undoe. You have the filet powdered rice with all the seasonings. You have an oyster, and then of course you have the uh, uh, the, the undo on the back. And then you mm -hmm. kind of cross the legs. You see how the breast is kind of filled up nice. Uh, so now, of course, we're going to season the inside. Now, as we did the inside, we're going to do the salt, uh, the pepper, uh, the granulated garlic. And what we do now, we go to the oven and we actually roast this bird separately in the oven. And once it cooks in the oven, of course, you see the juice coming out, uh, it puffs the quail mm -hmm. up. And so what we do for the restaurant, uh, at the restaurant is we take our paring knife, and if you can, just gently cut it to about right there from the leg so we can open it up a little bit. Now let's talk about the gumbo for yeah. a minute. The gumbo is made with the bones of uh, the quail, and then we put the bones of uh, of a Cornish hen. We roast them off with the quail bones, and then we strain all of the onions, celery, bell pepper. We just make a rich quail gumbo stock. And uh, everything's out of it because the idea is that once the quail goes into the plate, the gumbo is in, and then when you cut the quail, all of the ingredients fall into the gumbo. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna show you how to do that in a okay, minute. Okay, we'll do that. <laughs> Stick around. We're stirring it up with John Foltz. In 1967, Dutch Stagner realized his dream to run his own meat market. Fifty years and three generations later, Double D and the Stagner family still operate with Dutch's original commitment to quality. Pick up some Double D sausage today and share your good times with us on Facebook. Hi, I'm Donnie Rouse. There are a lot of different reasons to shop at Rouse's. It's the people. Everybody that works here is just so nice. Our stores get deliveries seven days a week. They have such a wide variety at Rouse's. Everything's in stock. I mean, everything. We use Rouse family recipes and ingredients found right here in the store. It's the food. Rouse's food tastes like homemade. And they're local. Like us. We also have great prices. That's the difference Rouse's makes. about ready to uh, die by gumbo here, Chef. <laughs> okay, well, first of all, I mentioned again, if you look at the dark, the swarthiness of that gumbo, there's yeah. no onions, there's no particulates in it at all, and that's the rich sauce made with the bones of the quail and Cornish hen roasted with, and then we strain everything out so that everything is actually in the quail. So uh, you have your sauce over there, you have your okay. gumbo, and you just want to, and we bring it to the table and we pour it gently right into the crevice uh, uh, just like that. I tell you, you could come be a waiter at Revolution Farm. Oh, and you want to pour it right to the top of that rim almost. Uh, 
And of course, yeah, all of the ingredients inside the quail will start to fall into the soup. And that's, mm -hmm. the, way it's, that's the way it's served at the restaurant, nice and clean like that. And uh, you'd be surprised how many people sit down and they say, instead of an entree tonight, can I get four of the quail put on a plate with the gumbo sauce around it, and that'll be my entree. And you tell them, no, I'm sorry, whatever we don't serve you like want that. To do, whatever <laughs> you know. want to do, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, death by gumbo. You know, that's the first time I think we do death by gumbo on air. So they said, really? yeah, I don't think we've showed this We're to anybody else. <laughs> can I try it here? Absolutely. Right. Oh, you wait till you try that sauce, mm -hmm. that sauce there. Little piece that's, of oyster. Yeah. Mm. That's a good gumbo. Say bon. huh? I'm ready to die. I'm done now. I've had it. <laughs> what a pleasure to have Death you. Death by gumbo. <laughs> Restaurant Revolution? Where is the recipe besides Bayou Wild TV? Well, 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 you can get it in my in my Wild Game book, my cookbooks, mm -hmm. and you can get it online because my if you go to Chef John Paul's recipes online, you're going to find a thousand of them, you know. So uh, we're happy to give them out. Y'all go look it up. I'm going to finish this off. <laughs> I'll just come eat it at the restaurant. <laughs> yeah, cook it's easy it for Either way. Add the taste of Louisiana to your next meal. If you like creamy, bold, tangy, or spicy, bring home the taste of Louisiana with sauces from Louisiana fish fry products. Hi, I'm Donnie Rouse. There are a lot of different reasons to shop at Rouse's. It's the people. Everybody that works here is just so nice. Our stores get deliveries seven days a week. They have such a wide variety at Rouse's. Everything's in stock. I mean, everything. We use Rouse family recipes and ingredients found right here in the store. It's the food. Rouse's food tastes like homemade. And they're local. Like us. We also have great prices. That's the difference Rouse's makes. The iconic whooping crane is back in Louisiana. If you spot a whooping crane, remember, observe and admire it from a distance. And always report any harmful activity. You can always help the Louisiana whooping cranes thrive by donating to LAWFF.org. Thank you to Chevron and the Louisiana Wildlife and Fisheries Foundation for their generous support. Thanks for watching Bayou Wild. You know you can always get our great merchandise. We've got our Bayou Wild hats and shirts, and we even have camo hats to head out into duck season. And if you miss any of our episodes, you can always go back and catch them. BayouWildTV.com. See you next week.